do. But the final match of the night, again, we, we came into tonight really hoping that it was going to be the match of the night. Why'd you have to do that to me? I, I wanted, can I just interrupt you? I wanted Team Bliss to Kelton's Knights to be match yes. of the night because the only team to beat Bliss in the last year in O's is Kelton's Knights. And uh, we got absolutely disappointed by that one. It was a terrible game. So the stakes are high. This game has to deliver because everything so far today has been a whitewash. Or it will be a speed run and Guz might actually be correct in the before 10 prediction. How long have we got? It's currently 9.21. So <laughs> you just don't know. going to have to be you a quickie. Just, it, <laughs> Speaking of which, let's get through this pre-show nice and quickly. Uh, fan Esports, oh, oh, men a la foe, however you want to tout them. Uh, they've been an interesting roster coming into this stage. We had some pretty serious concerns with all the, the shuffles that have been made, Mandy. The, the, the roster's in, the roster's out. But ultimately, it still led us to believe that men a la foe are, are well and truly up there in that conversation. Yeah, look, it's been a bit rocky, but I think it's fair to say that for literally every team in this region other than Team Bliss. So for me, my opinion on these guys, I'm still fairly confident in sure. the structure that they've got going and the way that they're interpreting the game. Like, yes, they're one of the more slower teams, but I don't think it's a bad thing in the region. I think they've got a great interpretation of the game. I think Hunters uh, especially um, matured a lot as an IGL in the last year. And I think it's coming to show in this server as well as he uh, sort of like conjures the magic between these four players. <laughs> He's coming into his own, that's for sure. Again, at the... I'd say midway point of last year, we had super high hopes for the roster that uh, you know basically has been cut to pieces now. But with the yeah. new the newcomers, Dev, I, I say they're newcomers. Only newcomers to the roster. I mean, outside of Scars, Scars is really quite new. But Cairo and Poya come with a wealth of uh, experience over the last twelve to you know twenty four months. Yeah, even back in APAC South for Cairo, obviously back on that wild card roster, uh, even back before. Wildcard ended up dropping their old Wildcard roster and, and moving on to what is now Antic. Uh, so he has a wealth of experience. He's a very smart player. He's got a lot of ideas he likes to bring to the table. And also in this roster, he doesn't have the pressure of being an IGL uh, because Hunter is there as well. Uh, so I think it's great. Obviously, player has returned to form. Uh, yep. There was a moment a, maybe a year ago where he really shined and really started to show what he's worth. And you look at his KD at the moment, 1.6 KD, uh, despite having got smashed yesterday by Bliss. He's managed to retain a really strong set of stats. He's also playing really pivotal operators on the entry and on the Azami power positions, as we can see. Uh, yeah, great upgrades, I think, for Mammoth. But they also lost their two aspiring rookies with Frixel and Killerman going to Antic. So uh, this old Mammoth roster, now Man Esports, it is a, a double-edged sword, right? Sure. They were in a great spot. They went from dead last at the start of last year to second place in the off-season tournament. And then they got their roster picked apart, and now they've had to pick up you know, some players from the old Odium roster, yep. and Scar's a complete rookie. I think they're still finding their feet. Uh, they obviously started with two reasonably strong results over Panic and, and Kelton's Nice, but those games are probably a little bit closer than they should have been. Yep. And, and then losing to Bliss, as everyone is, uh, but definitely would have liked to get more than two rounds against them. So yeah. there's still a lot of proving to be done for this roster. Well, 50% of this server is still the same Odium from last year. That's <laughs> right. Kyra and Poya making a a, a short little stint uh, from the roster, but ultimately they've now picked up two newbies, and I don't say newbies by any means, but newbies to T1 in that respect. Quixi and Dirty both have performed really well in their first opening three games, Mandy. Unfortunately, it's it's been, uh, a, I, I guess, a little bit of a downer on the back of yesterday's performance against Panic, but you know, removing that from the conversation, this roster really is pushing that second seed. Uh, I would think that's fair to say. I think these guys have really surprised us. I didn't think that these guys were going to be in contention for second seed at all, if I'm completely honest. That's I thought fair. they would have been a super middle of the pack team. But in the last couple play days, I think they've really uh, shown better of it. I said it right at the start, but I feel like this is the kind of roster where if you're just not paying enough attention, like you're not completely switched on, saved or someone or Quixi or whoever, like literally anyone on this team will just like walk at you and something really bad will happen. <laughs> bad times are headed your way if you're not super focused while you're playing against Odium. And I feel like it's still true um, even up to this play day. I think you pointed out really well. I think Quixi and Dirty uh, slotted really well into this roster. Yep. Quixi being a bit more of that frontline support and Dirty being able to hop back Back into the back line, do that secondary support type of stuff uh, to help out President. I, I feel like they've got a really rounded team. 
And, you know, something to note, whether it's good or bad, Saved has been in the most opening duels in the stage mm. coming into today. Unfortunately, 7 and 9 doesn't look that great, but obviously they trust him in that role. Dan. He's a serial lurker, that man, and he's the kind of player that usually he'll get a 3k or he'll do nothing for three rounds. Like, sure. He's such a hot and cold, go big or go home kind of kind of guy. It's his play style, and it means that sometimes save will just have a saved round and he completely unlocks the round, and sometimes it's completely shut down, and because his role is so independent, unfortunately, in rounds like that, he's actually not offering much to the team because he's not actually helping them complete other objectives, he's really independent. And if he just gets picked, for example, like on Clubhouse, we've seen a lot, he goes and lurks blue. He dies lurking blue in the first minute of the round and he doesn't find a frag. He's not really actively helping the, the roster and usually his util is completely nullified as well. It's not like he was a player opening hatches or, or whatever. Uh, so yeah, Odium are a very curious team to me because by all rights, I thought that they were going to have a huge downgrade by losing Cairo and player. And yet we've seen them perform incredibly strongly uh, in their opening two games, uh, convincingly over six targets. And then of course the 7-0 against Circular Spheres. Now we have the additional context of all the team's forms at the moment, how yep. six targets are hot and cold, how Circular Spheres had a really shocking start to the stage with their lack of practice. Perhaps that tempers the results that we saw from Odium. Perhaps they got a little bit overexcited and they were really met with a bit of a reality check yesterday yep. when they lost to the newest team in the league, yeah. Panic Esports. I don't know there's a huge rivalry between them and Panic, particularly with, you know, Bappen. And so Odium losing that game was a huge red flag. I think they need this win over Man Esports to prove that this new roster is better than the one last year. Well, you know, the same thing has just happened to Antic tonight off the back of a loss yesterday. They have come in and absolutely annihilated, so there's every chance Odium might be able to do it. Said his name a couple of times. Bappen from Odium has been a player consistently throughout the last 12 months that has performed quite well. And his teammate, or should I say, Dev, ex-teammate in Cairo, slots in quite nicely for the Man LFO roster. And Bappen, I think, was the player on Odium last year that really actually showed up both Cairo and player. So Bappen was obviously a new player into Tier 1 at that point, whereas Cairo and player, the highly experienced veterans. And uh, Bappen coming in having such consistent performances week in, week out on Odium last year, I think made us realize, oh, hang on a second. We are kind of in an era of new up-and-coming rookies that are now coming to the fore front highlighting them uh, and Cairo is now finding his own place funnily enough the stats here for Bappen actually don't back up the storyline that I've been singing and that's because it's been more the save show uh, and I think Odium overall have a very well-rounded performance which is the hallmark of a good roster that plays solid siege yeah and just to double down on your comment about Bappen from last year in stage 2 2023 he had the third highest kills in the entire league so that just goes to show the kind of weight that Bappen can hold on his shoulders Mandy is it going to be required a performance from him tonight? Because it is a very, this is the close matchup. This is what, you know, you, you could really say this is the battle for second place. I think that's a fair battle to say. Um, I'm Antic? still leaning into. Nah, stuff him. Okay. Oh, actually, true. I totally forgot about Antic. Hey. Um, no, no, we wiped they, them off today. Yeah, oh, I them actually, off. like, I genuinely blanked out and forgot they were a team for a second <laughs> when you said that. Okay. Um, maybe this is the battle for third place, but alas, I'm still. <laughs> Leaning into Mammoth, to be yep. honest, for this one, sorry, Man East, well, it's not Mammoth. <laughs> and yes, I think if Odium do want to take these guys down, it's really got to be a team effort, in yep. my opinion. I don't think it's just going to be one of them show up or something like that. But I think as the new Odium roster has formed, they look more like a unit yep. than individuals nowadays, which like I'm pretty happy to see them do. That being said, I'm I'm still leaning into Man LFO to win this one, if I'm completely honest. Oh my, don't worry, I'm in the yeah. same camp as you. But I, I will just you know clarify as well, coming into today, they are both sitting equal second so the winner of this technically will become second seed but obviously there's a there's a i mean there's a huge conversation to be had as we get closer to the end of this stage as to what we will or won't expect from the top end of os we are All going right. to be headed to chalet hope you got your uh, hiking uh, boots on boys yeah so um Funnily enough, these two teams in the six matches that they've played between them actually only played three maps. So Clubhouse, uh, both of them have played Bank, we've seen out of Odium. Uh, and so clearly that's why Man LFO decided to ban it. It means we go to very much known territory with yep. Chalet. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, I don't know, with, uh, with Man Esports, we've seen them play it twice. They beat Panic and then they lost to Team Bliss. I think Odium 
getting uh, getting the side switch here as well and just choosing to start attack will give them a little bit of an advantage kicking in there. So I don't know. I know that a lot of people are uh, have giving a slight edge to Man LFO here, and I do think the numbers back that up. Man LFO, for example, beat Panic, whereas Odium lost to them. Uh, but I don't want to count out Odium because I absolutely underestimated this roster coming into this stage. I actually thought they were going to be quite pitiful after sure. losing their two veterans. Uh, you know, the most experienced player on that team is now Prez. And even though you've got big fraggers like Saved and Bappen, I thought you need a little bit more backline than that. I've been proven wrong because teams like Panic are stepping up. Uh, teams like Odium are succeeding and they're doing it well and they're doing it as a team. Yep. I think they're really going to be tested on a map like Chalet, which is so much about indoor outdoor combat uh, sure. so much window fighting so much really finicky power positions to clear and it's really going to test like how good they are as a team not just can xyz frag out saved you can't just lurk your way out of chalet you, you need <laughs> to have a solid team and if odium can do that yeah maybe they could be a shoe in for second place in the region well it's certainly going to be a fight there's no doubt about it it is getting a little bit cold in here boys did you bring your jacket no, I didn't left it at home. Apparently left it at home with the Yapo meter as well because that was a perfect instance there from Dev's, uh, Dev Marta Stewart. Yeah, uh, Shall I, we go. I said at the start of the day this was going to be the match of the day. The bar is quite low. <laughs> if it's not match of the day... <laughs> there is no bar. The bar has been <laughs> obliterated. <laughs> exactly. Shall I, we go. Man, Esports Telephone taking on Odium for the final game of the day for the Oceania League here and it's hopefully going to be a good one. We've had nothing... For seven ones and seven o's today, stomp into stomp into stomp, and that is a social media vote that I agree with. Fifty-three to forty-seven. We saw it at the beginning of the day on the talent predictions. It was pretty much fifty-fifty on our end as well, and for good reason. We head to Chalet though. Does that change your thoughts on this matchup? Nah, I'm expecting it to be close and competitive. Both teams should know what they're doing on this map at this time. It's a staple in O's, and I don't think it changes the discussion all that much. Essentially. A battle for second place here in O's at the conclusion of play day four. An exciting matchup on paper. Fingers crossed it ends up delivering. We jump into the ban phase and with Odium starting out on defense, they have the first ban and it is the Deimos taken off the board. The most recent operator introduced into Siege, Operation Deadly Omen. We've seen a little bit of Deimos play here and there. I can't help but feel that this is probably a target ban because typically he isn't justified to be taken off board. Also followed up by Grim. So two big info gathering ops in this current meta. We'll play no further part on the map. I'm pretty sure I went for Man Esports and you've gone for Odium as well. Sounds right. Sounds right. I can confirm. Give me a, a moment. Yeah, oh. I'll, give, I'll give you a moment. Oh, Sorry, you, you, almost, just, you almost had it, and then you kind of. I'm went. currently observing pictures of James Devon. I did see that on Twitter. Jumping on Manic's lap. It was very saucy, very spicy. I know. It, yeah. Not fit for stream? No. Valkyrie gets banned out, no surprise there here on Shallow. And uh, along with the Fenrir, it does take a bit of power away from the defense. And we've got another sign here from Chef Jeff. Why do casters purposely misread? Wait, what? Misread? Wh I, I I can't read. Misread whiteboard. Something, something, something. Very fitting. Did you do it on purpose? Because I misread it. Was it, was it deliberate? I wish it was deliberate because it would make myself feel a little bit better that I was in on my own bit. But no, I just couldn't read it. I did go Odium, by the way. Confirmation. Okay, on. okay, cool. 50-50. Not bad. What was, was what was the toughest game, though, to pick? I would agree. Hence the fact that most people have gone 50-50. Man, Esports LFO starting on the attack, whereas Odium will be on the defense first here on Chalet. Would this be the biggest surprise if this match ends in the same results as all of the other games that we've had today? 7-0-7-1 territory, regardless of who wins. I would cry. I've got a 30 minute drive home and I, I think I'd be crying the entire way I've got a 40 minute drive home and I think I'll be crying. That extra 10 minutes of crying is quite impactful. <laughs> Let it flow. Surely it won't happen though. Surely this is going to be crazy. Hey, maybe I should stop giving you lifts then. Maybe I'll <laughs> let you walk the 10 minutes and I can get Well, it was very wet last night. It, it was. It was raining. It's very wet quite today heavily. as well. Mr. Table himself. It was raining today as well. Good time to be inside and be a gamer. All right, let's get underway. Straight into the Repel outside Solar. Hunter on the cap town does have the kit. No Deimos is a little bit like taking away fun 
I always like when the Deimos gets picked. Even Grim. I've become a big yeah. Uh, yeah, you Grim turned on fan. Grim. I've been on I've Grim flipped. since the beginning. I flip. It's all right. We all have a bit of flip and flop in us. Entry through main garage is uh, Chef Jeff and Co. On this eastern side, just putting pressure towards Solar. Slow start here on Shell 8. No real presence from the defense in terms of those trophy stairs or trophy kind of hold. Drones go out from Ed Esports as well, down below. Very direct pressure. I was going to say, I imagine Scars will make his way over towards his balcony outside a bathroom. Eventually could put pressure towards Piano. Makes the cross safely. And pops an EE1D. Red ping information as well. Chef Jeff. Now in towards Trophy. Players actually in solo. Hunting against the opening kill onto Dirty. This is good early pressure from the attack. All saved flank coming through. But the prone angle here. Nice, he's dead. Will surely get the kill in three, oh. two, one. Oh, good timing. You've got your timing down, Pat. The plan's going to be successful as well from Hunter. Very successful start from Esports. President with a very crucial kill. But with that plan, it's very difficult to retake from this scenario. Even more so with losing Quixie down through the hatch. Good first floor pressure from Man Esports. The smoke makes this even more annoying for President. No bodyguards to save this President. And he goes down along with the rest of his team. It's a very swift entry from Man Esports LFO. Very direct solar side. Bit of pressure down below. And Odium just never really contested it. I mean, it was the uh, correct attacking approach. No one's holding the staircase there through Solar. And despite not having the tool of the Grim, which we often see quite important in, in zoning out that area to gain control, we just didn't see it contested all that much by Odium. Player essentially got his boots on the ground on the Repel for free. The rest of the team followed. Chef Jeff just sits down below on flank watch. There's nothing you can do. They got balcony exterior outside bathroom. They got trophy and they got Solar and through none of those positions was there any kind of defensive response from Odium. The entire defense was prepped for a library push and there was literally no push from library. You've so. got to be able to be versatile though, especially on Chalet, where yeah. there's multiple ways to attack sites. You've got to be capable of defending different areas. That's why typically the mirror is so strong because you can kind of set up mirror windows for two different pushes and then play off of that, but there was no pressure solar. Very easy plant in the end. Snow Wine, we go for the second round. Odium not happy with that top floor hold, so they go to the basement. Solus in play as well from Bappen. And I imagine with that a bit more of a roam potential, Kayu Claw plus two brow does mean main breach can get delayed. And interesting already when you kind of look at the attacking lineup for man esports. Glaz in play. Two smokes available through Hunter on that thermite. So their goal's gonna be opening up that main breach and then playing off the glass. They got the ram as well that can get them some decent first floor floorboards to be opened up. But there is that roam that does need to be dealt with. And the lineup being brought by Man Esports doesn't deal with that roam all that well outside of the Lion. Does lead me to believe they could go more direct, but the two brow is employed by Odium, slowing down the exothermic charge. Yeah, including the roam will be tough. Mozzie Solus combo makes it very difficult for the attack to gain information in this instance. And, and keeping that drone economy strong is key in helping facilitate the roam clear. I too thought that there may have been an opportunity for a more direct hit. But the two morale will put a stop to that. The Glass in play here can obviously post outside if required. Can combine with the smokes in the pockets of the Thermite. Ram able to achieve relatively easy vert from the front door, despite the mirror window facing inside. Oh, what a shot. And wow. That is quite a nice shot from Scars. His second kill on the game. And an important one in just applying some pressure here onto the defense. Yeah, it certainly does. I think saved that. That roam game from Odium could have been a bit annoying for men, especially if they want to get presence over towards main entrance, open up floorboards in front of fireplace, putting pressure down below. If you've got players lurking library or coming through from the hallway looking down from the mezzanine, can disrupt that. So it's a pretty big kill. Mirror window, a little bit annoying here. A couple of nitrosols available for Odium on the defense, and it's a plant off of these smokes. Coupled with Cairo on the glass. I mean, Quixie just doesn't even look ready for it. And there's a swing out from Blue. Chef Jeff in a good position over towards Fireplace Stairs. Has got this angle covered behind the shelf. It's a very acute angle. Red Pink Intel off of the E1D. Scars finds another one onto Bappen. The defense is just falling apart. There's pressure in Blue from behind. Player just actually pushing in on the backside push. Coupled with this main side push. I mean, just completely overwhelmed. Somehow, President has ended up at Fireplace Stairs and eventually knifed by Cairo. 
Smiles all round for men esports LFO right now here on the attack of Chalet. Happy indeed with that knife from Cairo. Odium's defense though looking quite diabolical. <laughs> so I, I should probably just say it's looking quite bad. Can you apologize? Please? Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, you don't have to say sorry to me. You have to say sorry to Odium. Say sorry, Odium. That <sighs> was a bit harsh. Sorry, Odium. That was a bit harsh. And why was it harsh? Because I, I said a word that magnifies the uh, terribleness. It's too negative. It was way too negative. It's only round two. It's only in the second round. And it's also Chalet. And Man Esports are playing well. And it's a pretty hard site to defend for that glow strat. If you yeah. lose your player up above, unfortunately those on site look a little bit silly trying to swing into the smoke, but they have to to try and deny the climb. Well, Man Esports is not saying sorry. They're not apologizing. Oh, I don't blame them. I wouldn't. In fact, they uh, looking quite happy with themselves after that second round. Kitchen and dining, we go for the third round. Opportunity again for Odium extensions up above, bringing the castle barricades. They will double down on that Solus and Mozzie Five, combo, go. which pretty ineffectual in that previous round, which is surprising on a map mm. uh, on a round like Snow Wine. They do bring the Azami as well for Quixi, and I do wonder again how extensive this roam will be. Saved over towards Barstock, backing in Bar. So yeah, I mean already signifying first floor control and library stairs control to be paramount on the defense for Odium. Well, the reason it was ineffectual is because the player that got the entry pick was outside, so it didn't even need to take map control, and then it was a direct hit. We didn't see anything like an extensive sweep from Solar Across or the bedroom office, etc. library. So we didn't actually see those tools really get maximized by the defense. I'm intrigued to see how this Solar clear plays out, because last time Man Esports got this relatively for free, despite there being no Grim. Capital may be more, a little bit more uh, heavily utilized here to flush out Quixie. He has keep it barriers to fortify that position. No floor is in play, for instance. So the explosive economy here isn't amazing. Kyra only with one impact remaining. Scars does have nades and he can post up uh, on the bathroom window. Does expose himself though to the swing from Piano. Ooh, they might just go quick. I think they six. are, yeah. Gone 6, push in, EE1D, one more available for Scars. Doesn't see anything initially on that clear, although up close now quickly. Takes position, shots initially don't land, he falls back. I think there's a frag grenade looking to be thrown in, eventually just lands in the jacuzzi. Still 90 seconds left in this round. Better from Odium, haven't lost anyone yet on these entries. In fact, they're even able to deny the entries themselves. No real soul to take. St Scars stuck out on the balcony. And it looks as if, from this overhead, far more presence over towards Mezzanine Library. In terms of a sweep across from man, he's bought. If they do so, they do need to get moving. Chef Chef down below looking to find these lurkers and quickly found that kill outside bathroom onto Scars. Really big kill. Just shuts down any kind of presence on that balcony now. And for Odium, finally, a kill on the board early in a round gives them an advantage. How can they maintain it and then look to double down on it? We'll see. So it's a pivot here from the attack. We'll see the lurk on the opposing side of the map to look to connect with the Capital, who will pressure out Solar. We also saw Chef Jeff with an advanced position inside a fireplace, but Maestro Camera complicated that. Peek it. Flames go down, pressure applied, player will respond. The Zami also quick seat now put in an island. Yeah, he, his cross back was he's always gone. He went in smart, prone, uh, crawling around and crouching. But as soon as then he felt that pressure coming over from Ego, it was kind of the run back that he can, almost just forgot about the fact there's an angle from Solar. Bappen trying to retake this position, and man, Esports, even with that disadvantage to begin, have been able to claw the round back. Not a lot of time. And a nice kill from Bappen. They play on their power Gorn, and with that, he's got good solar pressure, and President gets the kill, and then the double. Well, we have been speaking about flip-flopping, and in that round, it was flip-flop, flip-flop. Started great for Odium, then it felt like it was falling apart. Not a lot of time. And what's interesting about that is the, the, the presence of mind from Bappen. Knowing full well that player on Solar Repel was getting off it to go for the entry into Trophy because it was kitchen and dining. They want to obviously go for that horizontal plan. They have to. So as soon as he hears that Repel, he then pushes Solar, clears these two above. I mean, probably should have died there to play. I think player must have just whiffed a little bit. Eventually does land the shot. But even if player had have actually won that, he was still going to be in a very tricky position mm. as uh, President got that kill held down sight well. 2-1 into a tech pause. Good response from Odium. If he round though. 
Yeah, I like the initial response from the attack. They identified pretty early on that they weren't going to get solo near as easily as they did last time. So we saw the lurk rotation, the initial benefits of that. But as we mentioned, as we just watched in the replay, a really key opportunistic play there on the flank executed well, and it landed. An intriguing game thus far, both teams having some teething issues in the late round. I'm excited to see how this concludes. We are just in the midst of a technical pause. I believe one of the players have a sound bug, so it should be a pretty swift restart and then re-entry into the lobby, so don't fret. But Wait, the first three rounds have been... Yeah. Oh, where's Bapin? Uh, Fighting. Oh, I can see he's... His bicep. Yeah, he's I mean... Oh, just... Oh, stretch and just... Oh, oh, flex, random flex. Whoops. What's Chef Jeff on about again? He's like a man stuck on an island with like an SOS signal. He's like... Always with his whiteboard. He always has something to say. He always, he's always got something. Maybe he should be a caster. Potentially. Well, a better response from Odium. Really smart play from Bappen. To be fair, Kitchen and Dining on Chalet is uh, at times one of the better sites to defend. Played that quite well. The run itself probably didn't play out in the fashion I expected, especially with the roam game being employed by Odium. It actually was their on-site defense that won them that round. Even after losing a lot of that top floor control around closet, around uh, bedrooms and bathroom. Credit to President as well. On-site defense was good. It is 9.47 as we sit through this We would have finished before 10 if it wasn't for this rehost. That's all I'm saying. I stand by my earlier statement. Is it a confirmed rehost? Oh, pause. Technical pause. Right, technical pause. Yeah. Sorry. It feels, it feels like this is like one of the first ones of this stage, actually. The Oceania League's always been great for these. Mm. We haven't had too many. We haven't had that many. Mm. Come on, don't debate me. Compared to other regions, which I won't... Na <laughs> South Korea, it has been pretty good. I thought you were going to... Oh, Asia! <laughs> no, South Korea's worse. <laughs> they're, they're all bad. Yeah, it, 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 it's genuinely confirmed that every single time it goes to OT... Oh, tech pause. Interesting, isn't it? Uh, always. I, 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 I mean, I'm, I'm not, not questioning. I'm not, I'm, not saying I'm not putting on a tinfoil hat. No, 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 no conspiracy here. No. I don't think this tech pause is going to have too much impact on this game. So early in the uh, half as well, 2-1 lead for man LFO. It looked great in the opening two rounds. Third round wasn't even that bad either. It's always very indicative too. I mean, if you're a team that starts well, then you lose a round. It's, it's kind of like, how did you lose that round? Well, at one point, they're out 4-2 in the round. But... They didn't have a lot of time because that opening kill from Odin, because that on-site defense from Odin was a lot better. They looked uh, a little bit more locked in defensively. And so therefore, Man Alifo had to work a little bit more, and they had to wait until more so the latter stages of that round time became a factor. Then it's all about rushing around. Great solo play as well from Bappen in solo, gets a double kill. President holds on-site well, gets a double kill. Rounds are never over, especially on the defense. And Alifo will be looking to come out of this technical timeout, though, with uh, renewed hope that they can find a third round nice and early here on Chalet. Been good vibes on this roster as well. We saw the smiles early when Kairo got the knife kill. However, at Fireplace Stairs. And certainly a roster with so much potential over the next couple of years. And it's all about, you know, uh, this is the thing. When, when we start a campaign too, to begin 2024 stage one, how many of these are rosters wait? are going to actually stick together You're talking about throughout the year? The rec campaign at the start of the year. Um, I don't know if we need to give any kind of advertising to them. To them. They. Wrecked. Don't say their name. Sorry. Every time you say their name, they get a penny. <laughs> I don't know why I said penny. Well, we don't even know. I think we've had pennies for about 60 years. <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, this technical timeout looks as if it is uh, going to continue. Most likely, I imagine it's like rehost territory. Wouldn't be too surprised. I mean, I could quickly jump over. No, you could. You could just I'll have, I'll have a quick. Yeah, go, go a quick little look while I just continue to spin a yarn. We may as well get the upper meter up at this point, to be completely honest. I wouldn't mind having James Def Martyr Stewart in these kind of situations. He can yap for a good little while. You're not a bad yapper yourself, though, but 
we are we are still in the lobby, so it hasn't been rehosted yet. But okay. we are waiting the arrival of two players. Who are they? You didn't, I didn't look that didn't wrong. Look. I didn't want to leave you here forever. Yeah, we will be finished by ten. I think I said well, that. Well, not Dev. But. Yeah, I don't know why you've got Dev saying that because it was guns. Dev just You've been thrown under the bus. Dev, Dev just wants to take my glory. Is that a, a, a Guz fun fact sponsored by James Dev Martyr Stewart? I don't know. I don't know why, but every time oh, I... it's been fixed. Okay. That's yeah, fine. there we go. Cool. I feel like I'm always doxing James when I say that. Saying what? James Dev Martyr Stewart. But like... It's on Liquipedia. It's on Liquipedia. It's the same with Rob J. Monday. Jake Zonox for Diddy. Yeah. Buckle Guz Gary. Mandy Mandy Powers. <laughs> <laughs> Mandy, Mandy, it's like Mandy, Mandy, Mandy. No, you gotta say Amanda. Oh. That's when that's when you're upset with it. Amanda. Only when you're upset with her, yeah. What did I say often. about those entries? She isn't very often. Be no. careful when she dies from an EDD. <laughs> well, I did hear some noise that hopefully we can get back into this game very shortly. Cthulhu is challenging me to say his full name, and I'll be honest, I have absolutely no idea how to pronounce his surname. So. <sighs> Not even gonna try. Can't even. What is his name? I've. It starts with a K, the surname, <laughs> and then the rest of the letters are. Let me get up his. Uh, let me get. Let me get up his X. Oh, that feels weird to say. His. his, uh, his you Twitter. mean Twitter? <laughs> Constantine. Constantine Nurizen. Nuritenya. Oh, it's <laughs> close enough. <laughs> Uh, Konstantin Nuriz Hanyan. There you go. What town hall do you reckon saved is? Level 10? Level 11? 12? What? What? Saved. He's on his phone. Okay, well. Pretty sure he's checking his town hall. He could be checking his emails right now. Very important emails. He's checking his COC. His COC. Legally, I can't say what that means. Yeah, what, what the full name so is. now you're just kind of left with some weird. Well, if you know, you know. It's one of those things. Right, okay. If you know, you know. Can't say one word. I've already been banned in Twitch chat once tonight. I don't want to get yeah, in trouble. I did see that, which is really strange. I would... You got time. Was it timed out or banned? <laughs> <laughs> timed out. Oh, you got timed out. Right, okay. I didn't get banned. Fortunately, I can still chat in the chat. Chat in the chat. <laughs> All right, well, back underway. Chef Jeff has returned into the server. I think still. No, no. There we go. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Just a little delayed, and we do get the uh, ready up and no rehost, which is always great. Bar games coming up very shortly. Uh, thank you, as always, to everyone just kind of tuning in to the Jake and God Show. Oh. Find more on YouTube. If you're interested. Yeah, yeah, yeah. YouTube, Jake and Gus. We do have a big interview coming out. We do. Very soon. Yep. Do we want to give a, a hint? He has a charm. What does the fuck say? <laughs> well, that was a bit. Oh, well. <laughs> I was going to say he had a charm in the game, but I think you've. Your hint was maybe a little bit too obvious. Well, I think my hint was just straight up saying who it is. <laughs> anyway, back into it, the fourth round we go. Man, these sports started well. First two opening rounds, for those that might have missed it. Uh, very clean, concise. It's a really good siege. They were able to, for the most part, uh, pinch Odium quite a lot on site. Overwhelmed them, easy kills. And the first two rounds were very one-sided. Third round, though, we got far more of a hotly contested round. Started well, opening kill for Odium, and then, man, eSports got themselves a four on two advantages. They were once again looking to take up above due to that vert hole of kitchen and dining. Odium though, to the credit of Bap and President, were able to hold on, win the two on four. And we are now into the fourth round off the back of this technical time out. Bar games we go, fourth round. And we'll see if Odium can continue this good form that they found in the third. Although momentum has severely been diminished due to the break in the action. I got an A for effort, by the way, for Cthulhu's name. Oh, that's, that's nice. So it's a mezzanine slash library stairs hold, but there are no deployable shields in play. Instead, we are going to see President on the Azami make full use of those keeper barriers to provide support and freeing up other util slots for the team. Mirror windows as well, facing in towards library. So a couple of layers for the attack to unlock. Now they don't have an Ash, they don't have a Kali, so these mirror windows may actually be a challenge to take down. Brava instead of Twitch as well. And so there'll be a reliance maybe on hard breach at range with the Ace. Line being held currently by Scars. This is a pixel that you can find, although we won't initially. Please stack now over towards Office. So the clear top stairs is going to be the name of the game. 
it's pretty interesting in terms of the reinforcements that are up here, affording some protection to the defense. But the attack is breaking it down. The hatch is not opened up. So the Azami on an island, President down, four versus two at the midway point of the round. Yeah, I don't want to be too critical, but it's a very defensive lineup or shape of the lineup from Odium that's quite questionable. You already mentioned the lack of deployable shields, therefore very easy to swing these positions. Man, Esports doing just that. Good opening kills. And then the hatch not being opened up for the quick transition down after the pressure comes through. And Box is vulnerable because of it. Karan does find a kill on to Quixie. I think looking to try and retake Library Stairs. 60 seconds left in this round. A save now, a solo. You're out of the end of this hallway. His position known. Easy swing. And an easy round. Very, very similar to what we got in the opening two rounds from Man LFO. So out of the four rounds now played, three of them have been largely like that. And the singular round one by Odium was, yeah, a little bit of a flip-flop back and forth in the round itself. But oh, yeah, I mean, honestly, questionable on the defense here. I don't, here, know, right I don't know what that strat is, but I'm throwing it into the fire. That was bad. Yeah, that Just was, that was very interesting. No shield if you want to spice it up and use util elsewhere, but we never really saw the other pieces of util actually utilized properly. And Did you need the mozzie there? I was looking at that lineup and I think, yeah, do you really need the mozzie? Drop the mozzie, grab someone with a shield, be a little bit more hard anchored. It's bar games for a reason. If you're going to go there, you don't really have a lot of room to maneuver. You don't typically see players go on a roam on a bar games defense either. Yeah. Abstrude no? observation. Jake. Every now and then. Once a week. Once a stage. <laughs> Why can't? That's rude. <laughs> You're not wrong. <laughs> Into the fifth round. Once again, we go down a basement. Snow Wine was, though, comfortably won by Man Esports. They got the main breach opened up. With that, they were able to also get fireplace stairs control, and they had a back push come in towards Blue Bunker. Odium's defense was very much picked apart. They did try to employ some kind of roam game. It was actually the Ram on the main entry that found the opening pick last time out on this site. We'll see if that happens again. They do have the Ram Scars employing that. And again, pretty much bringing the exact same lineup where the Glass Thermite combo, you bring the smokes. And this time, though, a little bit of a lesson learned here by Odin by now employing the Warden for on site defense. They also have four Nitro Cells. So if you think about why they lost the round last time, was mainly due to the smoke obscuring the planter and then not being able to peep because of the glass. Well, now you've got nitro cells that you can throw without having to challenge the glass, and you've got the water. Do I even need to be here? You, do you want to take the color? You can if you want. It's fine by me. There's not much else happening right now. <laughs> <laughs> what are you... Oh, oh my god, the thermite breach is open. Oh my god, uh, the Zoda canister was late. The Zoda canister didn't do anything. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> no, that's actually pretty nice for a man esports. Breach opened up, and again, it will open that avenue for the guys to get to work. This feels very similar to that previous round. Bit of vert pressure, fireplace, nothing over complex. And the attack can now pivot and maybe start poking and prodding for the plant. Ooh, Scars though, straight down fireplace stairs. And it's a double stack too with Chef Jeff. Oh, this is nice. Drones going through to just see if anyone's manning that mirror window. They are. Yellow ping goes out. Oh. <laughs> Chef doesn't have bombo. Oh, it's sound, it sound cue though, it's sound cover. So they got no idea. That's interesting. That's one way to kind of at least make use of that Boogie Auto Breach. It doesn't check the left, though. The bot library stairs position. Karo did find a kill anyway. Threw the smoke onto Quixie off of that glass. Player continuing to push in from the backside. AE1D coupled with that kill. Lovely double push. Nitro Cell from President. Did mention those before, and there is that red ping. Oh, but then five play stairs retaken strong with the blue bunker position. A bit more control defensively from Odium on No side. one's outside. They're both on the other side, inside of Wine. Now, this is not really the way you want to play this on the post plan if you are the attacking team. Shots coming through from below. Players very low. Does still have an EE1D oh. charge available. Good headshot onto Dirty. No more Nitro Self President. Already used it. There's that EE1D. Kairos down, so it's a solo play for player. Three seconds. Red time. Just need to wait for that sound cue because someone has to get on it. And from below. He's too late. I think he's too late. Me? He's too late. I think you're right. I think you're right. No, <laughs> you're right. Are you kidding? What a strange and perplexing round that on a main breach plant on Snow Wine, no one is holding outside. Double push, sorry, double stack in wine of all places. 
the retake from Fireplay Stairs was great so, from Odium. There are a lot of weird parts of that round. So firstly, we see the smoke in Fireplace to obscure that mirror. That allowed two players to then stack down main stairs. Secondary smoke grenade to cover the close mirror in sight to then allow the plant to go down because the diffuser was not in the hands of the player's main stairs. Then we saw two players wrap, go wine in the post plant. So no one's outside for that plant position where you typically want a player in the post. 0 0.078. And then it comes down to a couple of milliseconds too late for the defense to counter defuse. That was easily the most insane round we have had tonight. And we have seen some very strange things this evening. It's interesting, but am I even allowed to say that the, the retake from Odium was fine? The post plant from Man was very questionable. Is that a round in which Odium maybe should have won? No. Like that's that's the strange thing about it. When you kind of look at the no, way that both yeah. teams actually played the end of that, they actually one played it probably better and the other one played it worse. But yet the team that played it better probably shouldn't have even won that round because arguably again to begin that round, that the fact that they one didn't even have the ability to deny the breach despite with that Zoto canister looking to delay, it still got opened up anyway really quickly. They had no real pressure from up above or player play stairs allowed that double pinch in and they still allowed that back push from main garage in towards white. They're just struggling to... The biggest part of that entire push is the smokes and the glass. And they they need, had a warden on the they board. They need to have that key warden on the board in a position to make plays. And they just... Uh. And it's Chalet, though. And they don't have to worry about that objective now, at least until OT. Yeah. So. And... Look, attacking on Chalet is very prominent, and I also think Odium's the kind of team that has the fracking power to be able to emulate what we've seen from Man Esports in terms of the attacking prowess on this map. Hunter, Shock Drone, looking to take out Default. Say, we'll get rid of that drone. Finds that kill, but so far hasn't pl found a player. Only the drone kills. 0 oh, 5 right now for Save to player with, honestly, a lot of expertise, especially in the franking department, but not quite here on Chalet. Bappen holding over towards Snow. Good drone information here from player towards Half Wall, Kitchen and Dining once again, which was successful, and so far the only successful site that Odium has been able to win on the defense. Do you wonder on how in which they're going to look to play it this time around? A minute 30 on the clock. And key positions still held. As we often see on this site, having those deep lines, those deep angles. All the defense can make it tricky for the attack to unlock. Well, last time Quixie in this position, kind of hopping in between solar and bathroom, was quite difficult to, to navigate for man esports. He got a kill, I, I recall he even cleared out this balcony position. Almost in a, a position to do so again. Scars is the player I think who lost his life there last time. Dirty, firing shots towards that Ego Belk. Trying to just hold this position in bedroom. And this is what men kind of did last time. And they actually did get this position but couldn't get the round. And Quixie does again with that battle of bathroom. Clearing out the, the pressure towards the balcony. Yeah, and able to escape as well. Trophy window not enough to catch him on the cross. Chef Jeff elsewhere. Bar looking to find a pick towards Stock. Dirty still has Keeper Barriers protecting him on this extension. We'll see if Chef can win this oh, fight. Oh, the timing! The out. timing! Oh, no. Looks the wrong way. Saved, able to swing. A three versus five. Make that a one versus five with Cairo on the deck. It's interesting because I think he's just overthought that for a moment. Chef Jeff wondering if he throws the flash into Bar Stock that he's going to push out the other side, but... And, and probably making it too easy that he would push in on the bar side. Credit to save though, he just kind of pushes into the flash, which is really the right play to do. If he falls back off that, he dies. And no more time here for player. I think he just wants to save his KD ratio, which does look nice at 7, 2, and 1. And he will save it. Odium get their second round. They win Kitchen and Dining both times on the defense of Chalet. It might be enough, honestly. Chalet is that kind of map where it can find itself to lend in favor of the attacking teams, depending on the teams who are playing. And I think when you kind of look at what these teams bring, attacking around certainly should be one of those things that they're both capable of. Yeah, so final round of the half. Man, Esports did a decent job in eventually unlocking that hole up above, despite... Yeah, it's the first time the Rome games I worked mean, for them. I struggled in unlocking the top hole. A couple timings were unfortunate. Yeah, the defense ultimately uh, too strong. Oh, someone's crashed, haven't they? Oh no. Well, this is awkward.
Yeah, and perfectly timed at the halftime break as well. Is 4-2 enough for Man Esports to, in your mind, give them the, the edge outside of just the actual numbers on the scoreboard? Can you not say that word, please? If Sorry, I, I say it, say numbers. if I say it, I get banned. The one that starts with E. You know which one it was? Right. Four-letter word. Edge. But, who is, I believe, the general manager of Team Bliss. True. <laughs> which is who I was talking about. Twitch chat, just, and I got banned. Like if, he, if he just types in chat, does he just get instantly banned? That's about what he says. <laughs> Hashtag free edge. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> From Team Bliss. I should be very clear. Very, very clear. Oh, jeez. Who are not playing in this game. Can you answer my question, though, regarding Man LF5? They've done enough for you in the first half. Uh, I've, yeah. I mean, it, it's... Weird, right? Because I think the dynamic changes as the cha as the, the halves shift, obviously. They had some creative ideas on attack, even if the execution wasn't perfect in all of them. Is that going to translate to defense? I don't quite know if that would be for better or for worse. Because, I mean, on the side of Odium, right? We saw them try to cook up some very intriguing things defensively, and they didn't really land. So maybe if Man LFO actually take a step back and just keep things simple here in the half, it could work out for them. But we'll see. Yeah, I, I definitely feel as if they're Attack certainly in a position that, for man, eSports, yeah, they're up 4-2. Great spot. Thought they played really well. And to be completely honest, I, I do still feel as if Odium have every chance to get back into this game. By no means is this one over. Unfortunately, though, at the halftime break, we will be heading into a rehost without a break. So bear with us. Uh, we'll go have a, a little short chinwag off air. When we come back, though, into the second half, we'll go.
You can see. You can, I'll take it up for you. Welcome back to the broadcast. Apologies for the rehost delays. I don't even know if a rehost, but I mean, this point went long enough that you could consider that one as we uh, have the bands that are wrong. In fact, they're not just wrong, they're just not there. This is going to probably end up either being another rehost or a gentleman's agreement, either of which I don't know. I think they might just continue. Just don't play the operators, guys. You know what the bands are like. It's not rocket science, please. You say this, but I'm almost certain we've seen instances before where we've had this happen. Oh, we have. And then players forget and yes. just pick a band operator. Just don't play them. Now, uh, Quixie just says, yeah, everyone reminded. Uh, well, I'm sure James will keep a very watchful eye because he's the kind of person that will point out the, in the eighth round and be like, well, I think they've just picked a band operator. He really understands the minutiae of the game. He does. Into the seventh round we go. It's the second half after Man Esports were able to put four attacking rounds on the board here of Chalet. Final game of the night here for the Oceania League. And it's been, of course, with its entertainment value. Most of it, though, outside of the server. Tech pauses, delays, rehosts. You really had to say we were having a fast day. And then this happened. It's like a, a whole week's worth of delays in one Well, I cursed, I cursed it because I just wanted to spend more time with everyone here. I thought you were going to say me. Well, you are one of those people. I am, well, I am part of everyone here. We do have a fun time in this group. Live in the uh, the studio, all together. That's why we are the most region in the world. The only region in the world with uh, all talent in one particular venue. Bappen with the opening kill on to Scars. Not sure why Rob's screaming in the background. He didn't even see the kill. Maybe he stubbed his toe. Yeah, maybe he fell over, stepped on Lego. That is painful. Kari inside a dining. Good start for Odium. Did mention before the break, they are a team that's very good when it does come to attacking. This kind of has all the hallmarks of even an OT. I'm calling it now. All right, it is a little lost right now and eventually just drops. It is Snow Wine. Does have Sheffy Jeffy holding down bloat on the smoke, giving up. Bit of a critical position on this first floor, but they are down a player. And uh, still with a bit of control towards library stairs and player actually holding in towards games. Kind of a slow top floor clear right now from Odium. Still a minute and 20, but they haven't really had any kind of first floor control. This is a pretty dangerous room here from player over towards games in a flanking position. Lion scans may stall that out and Quixie still has one in the pocket. Four Rotero's available here for Dirty. And with player rotating towards side and likely getting keeper barriers down, the floor is will be critical in dealing with those. Hunter though to retake up above. He's being allowed over towards Gain's position. So keep an eye on him later on in the round. Could play Disrupt, but it does mean that there's only three players on the objective itself and Odium may be able to trade it. I mean, Hunter feels like the key win condition right now for Man Esports. If he dies and this becomes a three versus five, I think Odium will have every ability to just kind of push sight. Hunter's got no idea, though, if main entrance is and outside the fireplace itself is where a player has already crossed. Knows that there is clearly pressure West Main and Dining. Gives away his position, and with that quick seize up close, he might catch him off guard. And I, I think he will. It's just a matter of who can win the battle. Up close, though, the Dimar is strong, and the head was found courtesy of Hunter. Now Mike's got a 4 versus 4 and throws a spanner in the attack for Odium because suddenly they're going to deal with the threat behind them. Look how low he is as well. Now the rush, Chef. Jeff, though, waiting, still has a gas babe. The gun needs to stand up, though, with the SMG. Oh, he pulls out the shotgun. Good enough to get the kill onto President. Dirty, though, with a quick trade. Looking to try and find that default position, though. Dirty sticks. Needs to stay stick. Play up, can't really swing. Good hold coming oh. in. And Cairo. What? As the solo player brings it to a one versus one and he knows where that player is. Nitrous I'll throw him, but same pushes forward and oh. saved will save the round for Odium. Mm. Scrappy affair from both teams. I thought maybe Hunter did enough up above on the flank. But no, he couldn't spoil the round enough. And Odium still find a way to get a, a, an attacking round on the board to begin the second half. Kyra must have been distracted by something in blue when that execute came through because the diffuser just beelined straight through the doorway. I mean, Dirty here, he runs right across. And in that moment, no one was holding the cross from blue. Kyra eventually makes his way out and a valiant attempt in the clutch. But too little too late from the defense. Great start though for Odium. Needed that one just to keep the scoreboard nice and close to get a round on the board to begin the second half. It's been some time since the 
first half clearly finished as well, so it's been a, a good little rebreather for both teams. Reloading. Now the response needed by Man Esports. LFO. Very trap heavy looking lineup with the Capcan and the Frost, and then player has now left the game. Rehost has been called and called promptly in time, so we will be heading, I would say, very likely to another break. It will be on the cards very soon. Unfortunately, it's just one of those games. I imagine it's just a straight game crash. All right. Well, unfortunately, Rehost has been called, and we will be sending this one to yet another break. Thanks for sticking with us. We'll be back shortly. Brazil. Now. The Gimnasio do Ibirapuela is the home to the hammer as we get set to write the next chapter in R6 Esports history. This is the Six Invitational 2024. Vamos para Samba Ruyo!
and it's all falling apart for W7M once again. But it is happening for FaZe! W7M respond. You wanted to find him! And he finds one! We cannot! We know we can't find him! It's a red time! He can't finish it! He's no brother! Infinite overtime! It's upon us! And we get it! We get it! This is how legends are created! Is this the moment? where we can crown a new champion, a new dynasty to be created. And yes, we will. Yes, we will. W7! They cement themselves as one of the greatest of all time. Howdy ho, as we return here on Sea Shanty Night of the Oceanic League. Reloading. Four to three scoreline. The real question is how long will we last before the next rehost? <laughs> That's a phenomenal question, Jake. Top, oh, top 10 oh. questions, scientists still cannot answer. Five seconds to go. Aggressive extension, util in pockets, castle in play, deployable shields for front facing contact over towards library. So anticipate man esports to get in the face of their opponents in this round. Trash talk in chat, the vibe is at an all time high. This is peak oceanic siege, ladies and gentlemen. Is it? It is. I feel like Pico's Shen Siege with the uh, three matches that we had earlier today, 7-1, 7 is Farmers League. Mm. But everyone has... It depends. Uh, do you prefer speed or do you prefer quality? Quality. Quality over quantity. A man of class. But this has uh, been a very quality match. It's been alright. It's been pretty good. Definitely been the match of the day. As we expected. Papin just taking his time before looking to make entry in towards top library. E1D is going to be utilized by Quixie. Papin to just keep maneuvering his way forward. As EDDs of Honta have been spotted and pinged out. Good uh, clear of the shield, no catch for defense. The only ping information as well, top library on that Azami of player. He might just opt for the swing, but saved. 
firing off those shots. And player now very much aware of his position over towards games and an opening kill for Baffin onto Scars. That coming from this top library position that he was allowed to enter into. And a couple of trades around the map right now. Chef Jeff got one, rotated back down towards basement. 90 seconds left. Odium still with the player advantage. Doubling down from Ego. It's Quixi with the kill onto Hunter. Good pressure from Odium. Over towards Library. Now Ego Balk in towards Office Slips Quixi. No more EE1Ds. Utilizing those on the line very nicely. That's a strange swing from Cairo. Wanted to find some information, but just all too easy. Quixi watching. And now suddenly Chef Jeff has the solo. He gets caught. Over towards the fireplace. And Odium will tie things up. 4-4. Yeah, they just didn't play into the defensive setup. No one's holding the shield. Piano hallway. And there was no catch. So that was very, very easy for the Ash to initially deal with. Puts a lot of pressure on player top library on the Azami. And whilst he's, you know, typically quite good in holding that position, you can't be overly reliant on that. He needs support from the likes of the Breach. The angle was being held. But equally, it wasn't contested by defense. And there was really no flank opportunity available either from Man Esports. There's every little part of the defensive hold was taken down. With relative ease there from Odium. Good confidence booster for them off the back of the rehost. I'll be quite pleased with that result. 4-4 scoreline. Another pause in the action, but this time intentional. Man Esports using their one and only tack to talk things over after a poor defensive round. Do we really need to take a tactical timeout at this point? After all of the, del the delays that we've had. Come on, guys. Don't delay it even further. This is actually going to go all the way to overtime. 15 rounds. And if it does do so, it could be on for the potential longest match of Siege in Oceanic history. For one map, of course, I, not, not serious. It's up, it could be up there. If, if, if we get that, that far. I don't think so. I'll get James to fact-check. Surely back in the day, we had some much longer rehearsed. Oh, this is up there. I mean, you're, you're including the five-minute timers, ten minutes... Because we had two. I mean, when we used to have like mouse bugs and stuff. We oh, used to have a lot more all the mute bugs as well. Yeah. yeah. But that we we didn't stop the games for that. We just kind of had to deal deal with it because it only affected us. Yeah. Ninth round we go. So far, it has been very attack sided though. What Not is this too lineup? Surprising. What is this lineup? Jake? For men esports. Yeah. It's a very roam heavy lineup. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm also on the attack. Oh, sorry. You're talking about the attack lineup. Well, it's changing. We're switching over to, to a Sense Glass combo with the Amaru. Five seconds left which is going to indicate that they, they want to play off of the RAUs with the Glass. Is Attack that what you're insinuating? Well done. Well okay. done, my apprentice. I taught you well. Well, the thing is, the Sense Glass combo is actually quite powerful. Hold that thought for a moment, because Quixie's about to... Ooh, no, I was going to say, maybe get a kill. That is the least obvious spawn pick I've ever seen in my life. I don't know what that was. <laughs> <laughs> Chef, well, he's trying to cook something in that round, but that was uh, that was very raw and organic, as they say in the biz. But yeah, right. The sense is going to be key in this round. They'll combo that with Glaz. Glaz actually can move around a decent amount and still see through those walls, so big benefit of the Glaz. And Saved has that threat factor on the Amaru to potentially go for a play up a hatch or, or well, something, but it looks like his pathing is already pretty dry. I do want to say, the positioning from Odium is a little bit interesting considering their lineup. It, does this not just more so look like a trophy push? Play off of the drone holes, throw the RIUs. In fact, President's up above with Kit on Ego, and he's opening up towards Mezzanine, and then the big window position, save lurking towards Bar. I think they've got a good lineup. Good angles being created. I do wonder if they maybe are setting up for a more direct approach then. Get office control, and then eventually you play off of uh, the RAUs through dining with Glaz, open up main bridge, and he can just sit like fireplace stairs. If they wanted to go trophy side into kitchen, they would have taken a solar approach. Instead, they are very much just trying to get office, fireplace, and main entrance, and I think then they'll they'll stick dirty at a very long angle. I mean, I like the setup. The flank watch drones are really good. Once dining walls open, it may actually be quite a challenge for Man Esports to recontest. Can't the basement? Probably not on. Well, they need to contest now. At this point now, you can't let them get this plant down. Otherwise, your ability to recontest with this kind of lineup and setup is going to be very And difficult. they don't have Nitro for plant denial as well, so that actually makes it quite difficult. Save can just go to West Main if he wants and push up, and he can actually aggress. Oh, 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 oh
Yeah, and then go for the plant. Yeah. And uh, the sense will go drone hole and Wow, this is cooked. It. This is straight through the strap book, but President, that's that's one big part of the wind condition. And the maestro complicates things because he'll be able to see through the walls. So No RIUs. So this could actually backfire, and I'm starting to think it might. Has been pinged out, saved, should get denied here. Oh, oh I got shot out. Okay, smart. Plant, though, does go down and saved as well. So the plant is not on the floor. Chef Jeff, though, he is. Oh. And then another one wow. from Quixie to just try and salvage this inside of dining. Okay, Quixie will get rid of Chef Jeff. Bappen will double down onto player. And Hunter on the Maestro. All he's got left is himself and his cameras in a one versus three. And Quixie able to just quite literally push through and just kill everyone. I don't mind that. That was a really weird round. The way Odin won that round is not the way they cooked it up, but a really good creative pivot. No, I totally agree. Things didn't go exactly to plan. That Maestro camera initially complicated things. They dealt with that, though, by shooting it whilst it was exposed, trying to deny plant. Saved ultimately did die. I don't know exactly how. It was in the midst of all that chaos. It, okay, so Chef Jeff able to execute a flank. Yeah, then But then Quixie activated, hits a really, really nice shot there onto Kyra. That was key in the round. And then Maestro put it on an island kitchen. So, overall, that was... Probably the most entertaining round we've had so far. So it feels like to me, for Man at Esports LFO, they put a lot of stock into that Maestro camp being able to deny, deny any kind of plan inside of dining, which is why then they doubled down on that kitchen side, solar side. For the most part, it did throw the attack into disarray, and they were very fortunate that they got the kill onto the Sens. But I actually still think overall the plan from Odium just looked a lot better than what Man Esports. What Man Esports probably needed, like where's the flank? Even if it's top floor, bottom floor, like through basement, west main, like try and get a bit of that control. I mean, enable like a fire. Like typically on that kind of attack, you would see a defensive member try and go to like fireplace stairs and peek up late round when they're trying to execute through main bridge. You could. I think they had double drone below, so it would have been tough. You could have sent Solace maybe. I think a nitro as well for Denial could have been worth yeah. it. But. Well, question marks right now on to Manny's Sports' defense of Chalet. So far, unsuccessful through the first three rounds, and Odium have taken the lead. For I believe the first time in this match, and now uh, looking like the more likely of the two to walk away with the win. Feels like, man, esports might look to get aggressive here, which is probably in their DNA as a roster, hence why they were able to get some good attacking rounds. But aggressiveness is not always the answer. Even when you're down, you do not have to force anything. But to be fair, in the last round, they kind of played that sit, sit back mentality, tried to play off with their utility, and it didn't work for them. Yeah, Cairo in a bit of a pinch here over towards West Main Stairs. He can't necessarily get back towards site because he's unsure if Trench is being covered. It's not, but we have the privilege of the overhead to know that info. We'll just hold I've seen this drone hole be used more and more at this stage. Yeah, they've been pinching it from Nico. I assume Nico was the first to find yeah. it, being, being Nico. But... He does make it back. This is another risky position. So player's being cut off from front door, about to be droned out. This is a do or die position. Yeah, turned out, forced to oh. back away. Oh, he's just gone for a stroll. He got lucky there. Got very fortunate. Couple of bullets in the back, but he gets away with his life intact. His car's up above. And this is something we haven't seen from Man Esports. Just the Lurk Roma, and it might catch saved. It will. Gun down, wasn't at the ready. Finally, Man Esports aggressive on the roam. He doubles back for more, though, towards Piano. No, thinks better of it. Player eventually loses his life to Bappen. Scar's making. A bit of noise, expecting the flank. Red Pink, oh, the timing! And Dirty gives away his position. I mean, Scars had no idea that he was essentially being hunted down by the buck of Dirty. 60 seconds left, and they are very much putting some stock and time into clearing out Scars. It's an easy kill. Dirty not aware of the angle. Through the box, and suddenly with that man, Esports, in the best position to get themselves a defensive round. Isolated fights so far away from the objective. This is a basement defense. In blue. President can cross here. It could make things interesting, depending on where the coverage is. I mean, they have blue coverage. Oh, Quixie. If he does win this fight in blue, it could make the plant a little bit more vo uh, viable. Frag grenade thrown just to clear out that Z position. 20 seconds. Not a lot of time. Repeat. Not quite coming through. Indeed, Cairo does get baited into it. I don't know if he really needed to go for it at that moment. Scars. Oh, that was oh, not what? what he needed to do. 
couldn't win that oh. round, and Odium now with very much a massive chance yeah, to clutch up. Chef Jeff still has a gas, babe. Oh, the timing! Oh, no. They've thrown it away! I mean, shocking in the clutch from Man Esports. But credit to Odium. Just kind of brute force their way eventually to sight. How many fights does Scars need to win off site for them to be able to mm, win a round? Wow. Arguably, he should have won the third. That I site defense was horrible. I have no idea how he didn't win the third, though. He got super unlucky and probably should have been rewarded, but this was great. Very good. Then we saw the feed from Dirty. Don't know why he was chasing it, but he did. Yep, very good. He 60 seconds, playing. by the way, at that point, four on three, and Quixie just lurks blue. Kara does not need to swing that. Just play sight, play angles. Force them to clear you. That then yeah, takes time. That, unfortunately, for Scars, after having such a good round, very much lost them that round in that whiff. And then timing. And then the, the timing from yeah. Chef Jeff got baited by the plant. He could have really held that fireplace stairs, even allowed the plant to be successful. Obviously, we had the information that a player was coming down. He evidently did not. So it's very easy from our position to just say, just hold it. But match point for Odium. And to their credit, had done so from playing behind after going down four to two. It is now four to six, four rounds in a row for Odium. And so far, their attack has been yeah pretty good. Bappen 7-0, six and one from Quixie. The question marks here for Man Esports, LFO. This is a team that just yesterday, they felt very happy with their performance against Bliss, pushing them in a lot of rounds. The scoreboard not telling the full story, which of course was 7-2. But arguably, and Bliss themselves saying they played well, it maybe should have been a 7-4 or along those lines. Right now, here on Chalet, yeah, very questionable defending. And I think Odium are very much feeling they've got the confidence. By the way, of course, men now can no longer get the three points. Can only collect two if they can force this one to overtime. That's easy. Yellow pinged out, information onto Scars. The Solus worked in the last round. This time, though, easily dealt with by saved, and Odium are approaching the finish line. Yeah, better roam clear initially here from Odium compared to the last round. Again, facilitated by Info, and the Solus not countering it. Jeff, Jeff, the trophy window, looking for something back. But already they find themselves in a challenging position for this 11th and what may be final round of the match. Bappen to join himself forward, take some ground through games and the like. Looking to contest the playoff. Once again, library stairs, 0 3 since the re host. It's a position that he has become quite notable on. One that Odium would have expected heading into the match. And we'll see how they counter it. Drop down. Quick see. Gets rid, rid of Cairo. Frank grenade. Annoying for player. I mean, that just makes it so annoying. That tiny little piece of utility. Double. Swing. Triple. Stack outside of the balcony. And now into a one versus war with Chef. Uh, four. Feels like a war right now. War of attrition. And Chef Jeff is the solo. Well... I mean, that is a shocking way to end the game for Man Esports. They got absolutely dumpstered here on Charlotte. Their defense picked apart very comfortably by an Odium roster. That was clearly seeking to continue their good stage. They go to three and one on the stage with a big win against Man Esports at LFO, a team that I would consider a direct rival for something like that second place seeding position, third, if you will, as well. Either way, these are two teams with big aspirations, and for Man Esports, uh, they'll be very disappointed with the way that finished. Yeah, I think they left quite a bit on the table in that matchup. They didn't realize their potential. It is their best of one, so we'll see if they can bounce back. Yeah, well, that's going to be us done for today, of course. We'll let the couch break that one down. Yeah, I think we uh, we somewhat share the sentiment. Obviously, uh, a very disappointing second half for Man LFO, but, you know, I guess not to... Not to bring up the obvious but unfortunately when the game is stop start like that momentum's very hard to continue to, to work on Dev. Yeah I think it also comes down to a bit of mental game. Uh, there was a sure. little bit of back and forth in the chat clearly uh, a bit of smack talk going on and when you got delays you just let that simmer a little bit. Yeah. A real telling moment for me was when Man Esports took their tactical timeout which was uh, three rounds uh, from the end. I think they were 4-5 or at the time or, or no they were, would have been 4-4 four, four four, at the four. time yep. uh, and they weren't able to convert that. That was a uh, a big moment. Uh, a couple of rounds where they had a numbers advantage, weren't able to convert. Uh, defense of Chalet is hard, but not so hard that you should be getting destroyed. 
And it ended up being one, two, three, four, five, six rounds in a row for Odium. Oh. From a, a substantial 4-1 lead, then getting swept to that point, it's uh, not a good look for, for Matt. They, it's going to be hard for them to get to sleep tonight, to be honest. Like, it's gonna be, they're going to be kept up by this loss. Uh, it's going to sting. Mandy, some would almost say it's diabolical. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, some would say that on the cast, and you know, we'll say it on the desk as well. It's uh, it it's a rough it's a rough prospect for Man LFO because we had really come into this expecting that they were probably second to the the second to the king. Yeah. Uh, obviously, Antic's still in that conversation, not discrediting. Uh, but up until now, they were the, the team that looked like they had the hottest run. You know, they beat Panic to start with. They then followed it up with a KK uh, victory. And then they went on to, to verse uh, Bliss. And, and the big thing with the Bliss game was Bliss was saying that was a lot closer than yeah. it should have been. You know, there was some competition. Yeah, that's the thing. Uh, and like even Logic, you know, pointed out that uh, he thinks that the best team to give a shot at Bliss is his team, Antic. Uh, but even though Man Esports only got two rounds, I think it was a really solid game from them and, yep. and Bliss themselves admitted that. Uh, admittedly, Man Esports did have a pretty slow start. Like they almost uh, got pushed to overtime by Panic at the time where we thought Panic were going to be the undisputed worst team in the league. And upon reflection, that 7-4 over Kelton's Knights is actually nothing to be too proud of considering Kelton's Knights have since then dropped the ball in all of their games. On the flip side though, Odium, right? They had a really strong start. They 7 and circular spheres like everybody else seems to have done. And then they lost to Panic yesterday. And that is a huge red flag to me. I thought that this Odium roster was going to be maybe in that number two conversation until they lost that game. But I don't know what to pick now, Rob, because <laughs> you've got Antic losing to 6T, who... Yeah sometimes can look like a dead average team. Yep. Uh, you got Circular Spheres getting 0-14 in their first two games. It, you got Man Esports losing here to Odium, uh, and you've got Odium losing to Panic. So I have no idea who is actually in serious contention for that second place. The one thing we know for sure is that Bliss is at the top, yep. and everything else is anyone's game. It is. It is. And you know what's the best part about all of this? We can hear it from President himself. Let's welcome him in for the first time. Prez, mate, it feels like it's been a while, but also I feel like I see your face all too common at the moment. Look, I've got to ask you, what what is your take on the on the discussion that we're having right now about where second place is, where it all sits? Because honestly, from our point of view, it is a nightmare to try and de to determine where teams actually are. Yeah, I mean, I said it yesterday in, in one of my tweets. It's like, Bliss is obviously at the top. Like, they've got all that major experience. Like, we, everyone kind of knows that. But literally everything from, like, second to eighth is, like, it's anyone's game. Like, I don't know, we lost to Panic somehow. Like, that was that was a bit ridiculous, not going to lie. Like, we should have we should have a 4 0 start as well. Yeah. Um. But, yeah, I don't know. I can't pick it either. Like, it's anyone's anyone's game. Like, I would have put Antic there. But, honestly, I've got us in second now. Yeah. After our performance tonight, I'm pretty confident with that. Mm. Mandy? Yeah, I wanted to ask about your two new pickups on the team. How do you think they fit in and where did they come from? Uh, yeah, so Dirty, um, me and Dirty actually played on NQS like about a year and a half ago. Um, so I kind of just brought him back. He's like crazy mechanics. He played pro CS. Um, so I just really wanted someone who had good mechanics because um, we're kind of playing that like aggressive kind of play style. And then Quixie, um, he was around last stage for a bit. Um, again, really good mechanics. Um, and even like every game we've played, he's pulled off some like insane plays. Um, so yeah, like we're just good vibes really. Like, I don't know, the team environment's like the best team environment I've ever been in. Like we're all having wow. fun. That's really good. We all love each other's company. Um, and yeah, I think it's showing like game day. We're like, we're performing really well. So mm. yeah, really happy with it. Yeah, man. Big call, especially that comment about the, the team vibes. Really good to hear. Uh, I'm going to admit it. Like when I saw the Odium roster changes for this stage, I was a bit taken aback. I thought you guys might have lost your two best players, but you guys are actually outperforming, uh, you know, your former rivals like today, as we saw Cairo and player, you actually managed to take them down. But I want to talk about how that happened because you guys were down 4-1. And then you turn it around and you won six rounds in a row, uh, despite having some numbers deficits, despite having to crack through some pretty tough defenses and having a few hiccups. How did that actually happen? What was it like round by round, even when man took their tactical timeout? Um, I think with us, we surprisingly, we thrive on our attacks more than we do our defense. Um, I think what contributes to that is probably everyone on the team can make plays and can make plays any round. Um, so like that basement attack, that first basement attack we had, like we had no right to win that round, but we just, I don't know, we just pulled it out of the bag somehow. Like we adapt so well on the fly. 
Um, and yeah, everyone can just make plays when it's needed. And it's, it's really good to see. Now, I'm going to ask probably the most impactful question of the lot. Uh, what does it feel like to beat Cairo and play? <laughs> it feels good. It feels good. <laughs> I have a quick thing for Dev, actually, uh -oh, um, cool. just so we're clear. Who are the two best Odeon players now? I don't know, man. I don't know. You no, tell that me. Should be, that should be obvious. Okay. It's obvious you're, to me and you're, Bapin. Okay. You're trying to gas yourself up. And <laughs> Prez, I'm going to say the elephant in the room here. You often get a lot of flack. Everyone knows it. I'm just saying no. it. You, you know it. You often get a lot of flack, but you are playing phenomenally this stage. And I want to give you credit where it credit's due. So it. I don't care who the second best player is on the team, but best player on Odium right now, mate, it's you. Hey, I'll take that. I'll take that. <laughs> nah, look, um, everyone's playing incredible at this stage. Like, it's, it's so good. I'm, I'm so happy. And I think we can have a real, real good shot at the major. So looking forward to it. Yeah, there's a, there's a, long, uh, a long distance between now and then. That's for damn sure. And you guys have uh, kick-started off on the right foot. Anything you'd like to say before we let you go? Um, look, I know it's cliche, but shout out to the, to the boys. You know, like we're putting in so much work and we caught so much crap from everyone online and in-game. But I don't know, we just, we just pushed through it. And I don't know, if you're going to talk online, like maybe, maybe show up in the game to actually prove it. So, um, yeah. We'll, we're going to keep working hard and we're going to have a real good crack at the, the major. Um, shout out to Odium as always, really like helping us like behind the scenes with support. Um, Beulah, Reaper, Trill Peril, um, all them. So yeah, shout out to everyone. Beautiful. Well, we'll keep it short and sweet now, mate. Thank you very much for joining us. And uh, look, I'm sure we'll be speaking to you again next week. <laughs> you definitely will be. <laughs> have Take a good care, night, guys. Mate. See ya. Uh,